Patriots head coach Bill Belichick spoke for the first time on Wednesday morning since releasing veteran quarterback Cam Newton, paving the way for rookie Mac Jones to be his opening day starter. Now, the head coach was asked about Newton nine separate times in his press conference on Wednesday morning and failed to mention Cam by name a single time in any of his answers following those questions about the former Patriots quarterback. And the head coach was also asked if Cam Newton's status as an unvaccinated player played a role in his release. And he had a very interesting answer, staunchly saying no, and then going into his take on vaccines in general. Here's the head coach on Cam Newton's status as an unvaccinated player and its lack of a role in the decision to release him. No, I mean, look, you guys keep talking about that. And, you know, I would just point out that I don't know what the number is. I mean, you guys can look it up. You have the access to a lot of information. But the number of players and coaches and staff members that have, um, you know, been infected by COVID in this training camp who have been vaccinated is a pretty high number. So I, I wouldn't lose sight of that. From everything that I am being told, it is in fact the case that the Patriots did not weigh very heavily Cam Newton's status as an unvaccinated player. This was about football, and Mac Jones simply outplayed the veteran quarterback on the practice field and on the game field in the preseason contest, and that is why he is going to be the QB of the Pats. But we also should mention, down in Jacksonville, they are dealing with a situation with the NFLPA because head coach Urban Meyer said that Jaguars players were released or at least in part because they were unvaccinated. That of course is against NFL rules. So the head coach saying that there was no fit uh, Patriots head coach. That is Bill Belichick saying that Cam Newton's vaccination status did not play a role was slightly just following protocols by Belichick, but it also from what I'm being told was indeed the truth that Cam's vaccination status was not a driving force for his release on Tuesday. Belichick was later asked about Mac Jones. What is it that you like about the Patriots rookie quarterback? And he did give a pretty good answer about why Mac Jones is his QB one. Well, uh, you know, we've talked about that. Um, you know, first of all, he's had a, a you know, high level of production, um, you know, but I feel like he's been able to uh, show an ability to do things the way we want them done um, at a productive level. So he's young. I'm sure he'll continue to learn and grow. We'll see where that, that goes. But, you know, that's why we drafted him. And I think he's come in and performed at a level that supports that. Along with speaking with Patriots head coach Bill Belichick, we also spoke with the assistant coaches on Wednesday morning, offensive coordinator Josh McDaniels, saying that he has a ton of respect for Cam Newton, wishes him the best, and spoke highly of Patriots QB Mac Jones, as you would expect. And in transactional news, the Patriots making several roster moves on Wednesday. The first one being moving wide receiver Nikhil Harry to injured reserve. This is something that we all saw coming after Harry sprained an AC joint in his shoulder, diving for a pass against the Philadelphia Eagles on a deep ball from Jones, and will now have to spend the first three games on IR. Harry is eligible to return in week four for the Patriots against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The Patriots also claimed Malcolm Perry off of waivers, the former Navy quarterback, now a wide receiver slash running back in the NFL gadget player. You can do some things out of the backfield, a good ball carrier in space, and the Patriots might be able to use him as a gadget player, runner, ball carrier, uh, scheme touch type of player on jet sweeps, end arounds, reverses, things like that. So Malcolm Perry is going to round out that wide receiver depth chart with Nikhil Harry going on injured reserve. Perry is the one that's going to step up and into that spot that Harry left behind. The Patriots have also signed reportedly 11 players so far to their 16-man practice squad. Some of the big names there include quarterback Brian Hoyer. Yes, the Patriots signed Brian Hoyer to the practice squad, not the 53-man roster. That means that he 
uh, the Patriots still are only carrying one QB on the active roster, and that is, of course, Mac Jones. They also signed fullback Ben Mason and linebacker Jelani Tavai. Those are two players that weren't with the Patriots during training camp and are going to come in on the practice squad. Mason, according to Ian Rappaport of NFL Network, could potentially have a 53-man roster spot and push Jakob Johnson off to 53 as the Patriots lead fullback. They also brought back training camp darling Christian Wilkerson, a very good find in the UDFA market by Bill Belichick last offseason and defensive back Miles Bryant stand out from the preseason finale D'Angelo Ross also making it back to the practice squad and Ernie Adams is guy Patriots seventh round pick Trey Nixon the wide receiver he will also be on the Patriots practice squad this season so once again 11 players so far signed to the practice squad out of 16 those names will continue to trickle through over the next couple of days brian hoyer once again on the practice squad not on the 53-man roster Nikhil harry to the injured reserve malcolm perry claimed off of waivers during the cutdown process a lot of moves still to come for the patriots and we have seen a busy busy couple of days here in Foxborough. You can check out the rest of our coverage, including my podcast, Patriots Beat, with Alex Barth on our YouTube channel, Patriots Press Pass. And you can read all my coverage from down there at Gillette Stadium on CLNSmedia.com. <laughs>